Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is Canon Zoe Mini S, or IV Click Plus as it's known in North America, an instant camera with an 8 megapixel sensor and built in printer that can output 2x3 inch colour prints within a minute of taking them. It'll also let you print photos from your phone using a free app and a Bluetooth connection. Announced in March 2019 alongside the more basic Zoe Mini C or IV Click model, they're actually Canon's first instant cameras, with the company hungry for a slice of the lucrative market currently dominated by Fujifilm's Instax products. You're looking at around 150 Great British Pounds for the Zoe Mini S in the UK, or around 160 US dollars for the IV Click Plus in the US. For clarity, I'm going to refer to it as the Zoe Mini S for the rest of this review, but both models are identical other than their names. Both the Zoe Mini S and C employ the same Zero Ink or Zinc printing technology previously used on Canon's original Zoe Mini Instant Printer from late 2018, so all share the same print quality. The same Zinc technology is also employed by some instant cameras and printers made by Polaroid and Kodak, and in theory the media should be interchangeable, although Canon of course recommends you buy their paper. Here's a selection of Canon Zinc prints on the left and Fujifilm Instax mini prints on the right. Zinc generates 2x3 inch borderless prints with sticky backs, and are sold in packs of 20 or 50, working out around 50p or 50 cents per print. These work out a bit larger and a little bit cheaper than Fujifilm's Instax mini format which has an active image area of 1.8 by 2.4 inches and cost around 70p or 70 cents each. Peeling the back coating to turn zinc prints into stickers is a key benefit it has over Instax allowing you to quickly apply them to items. Everyone knows this is my camera now. Zinc paper is supplied in packs of 10 prints sealed in a foil wrapper so if you buy a pack of 50 you're actually getting 5 packs of 10 prints. Unlike Instax, they're not light sensitive, nor are they contained in disposable plastic cartridges, but there is a sheet of blue card to indicate which way up they should be inserted into the camera, and this is also used to calibrate the printer for each pack. Once you've used all 10 prints, the only waste is the blue card and the foil wrapper. Like Instax, there's no separate ink or ribbon, with everything you need to make a print actually embedded in the paper itself. The actual technology is different though, with zinc embedding three layers of crystals, one each for cyan, magenta and yellow, which are then activated at different temperatures generated by the print head as the paper passes by it. Unlike Instax prints, which emerge almost immediately but take well over a minute for the image to fully develop, Zinc keeps the paper inside for a few seconds before outputting the print in its final state, around one minute after taking the photo. Now, I haven't used it long enough to comment on print longevity yet, but I will update my written review at CameraLabs.com after a few months, so check it out and see what I think. And if you've had a Zoe Mini printer or any other Zinc product, do let us know in the comments what those prints look like after a while. The Zoe Mini S is a pretty compact camera, roughly similar in size to two packs of playing cards. Measuring 121 by 80 by 22 millimeters, weighing 188 grams and available in matte black, rose gold or pearl white as seen here, it's much more pocketable than the comparatively chunky Fujifilm Instax Mini 9 on the left or the SQ6 on the right. Fujifilm does make smaller versions, but they're still not going to squeeze into your pocket as easily as the Canon. Now, of course, being able to do that means you're more likely to take it with you and use it to take pictures. On the top surface is a light which glows different colours to indicate the status of the camera or any problems like the battery running low. There's a switch to set the flash on, off or auto, a power button and a lozenge shaped shutter release. Around the back, you'll find a basic optical viewfinder. A button which lets you choose between the full 2x3 inch print area or a square 2x2 inch area. And another which prints the last picture again if you need a spare and you can keep doing this if you're handing them out to people. Meanwhile you load the paper behind a large removable panel. You'll notice unlike the Instax cameras there's no indication how many prints are remaining. But there's nothing stopping you from opening the panel and simply counting them. Finally, underneath the body is a micro USB port to charge the built-in battery and a micro SD card slot. A fully charged battery is good for around 25 prints compared to around 100 on a Mini 9 powered by a pair of AA's. The micro SD slot confirms the Zoe Mini status as an actual digital camera. Unlike the fully analog Instax Mini 9, the Zoe Mini S has a small digital sensor and if you insert a memory card into the slot, it will store the 8 megapixel JPEG images on there for you. 
I'll show you a bunch of them later in the review, but for now, note that while the Zoom Mini S does have a digital sensor, it does not include a screen for reviewing images. Every time you press the shutter button, a piece of paper will emerge from the product. Now, while this crapshoot is part of the charm of instant cameras, those who prefer to review first before committing to a print may prefer Kodak's Smile Camera, which also uses Zinc technology but includes a basic screen, or Fujifilm's Instax SQ20, which uses larger square prints and is driven by a digital sensor and again has a screen on the back. Meanwhile, the cheaper Zoe Mini C employs a slightly lower resolution 5 megapixel sensor and is available in an arguably cuter selection of colours, but for most people the biggest differences between them can be seen from the front. The Zoe Mini C has a single LED flash lamp next to the viewfinder window and a small reflective panel for composing selfies, just like the Instax Mini 9. In contrast, the Zoe Mini S offers a much larger circular mirror on the front for selfies with markings to indicate where to position yourself, and more importantly the addition of 8 LED lights around the edge, acting as a basic ring light. This provides not just more illumination than the single flash of the Zoe Mini C, although that's also present here, but more flattering lighting and reflections in pupils. Now don't get too excited, it's not like a high-end ring light, but it remains a classy feature of the Zoe Mini S over its cheaper sibling. In terms of the lens itself, Canon doesn't quote the focal length or equivalent coverage, but I found the images roughly match the coverage of my Samsung Galaxy S7 rear camera, which is equivalent to around 26mm. Unlike the fixed focus of the Instax Mini 9 though, the Zoe Mini S offers basic autofocus from 30cm to infinity, as well as auto exposure, auto sensitivity, running between 100 and 1600 ISO, and auto white balance too. So while there's no actual manual control over exposure on the camera itself, the Zoe Mini S is at least far better equipped than the fully analog instance cameras to deal with broader lighting conditions. For example, at times when the very sunny scene was just too bright for the fixed sensitivity, slow shutter and smallest aperture of the Mini 9 in my tests, the Zoe Mini S coped just fine. As mentioned earlier, the Zoe Mini squirts out a print every time you push the shutter, whether you have an SD card inserted or not, and in fact the shutter refuses to even fire if there's no paper loaded. Now, this is pretty frustrating if you run out of paper and just want to snap a shot onto the SD card, but I found you could reload the blue calibration card to allow the camera to actually fire. Now, I'm not sure if doing so repeatedly would damage the camera, so do so at your own risk. The actual print quality in my test was basic, but okay. The Zinc technology isn't anywhere near as contrasty or vibrant as the Instax process, and side by side the Zoe Mini prints can't help but look a little bit flat. I also noticed a minor but consistent magenta pink cast to most of my prints, which wasn't visible on the original JPEG images, while flat areas of colour like a solid blue sky were sometimes a little banded. But on the upside, the images are a little bit bigger than Instax Mini and fill the paper without borders. I suffered from far fewer failed images with no overexposures to worry about. And you also get to peel off a backing and use them as stickers. Plus, the prints are a little cheaper too, 50p or cents versus 70p or cents. So there's pros and cons to both formats to weigh up. I should say though, whenever I show any instant camera to most people, they're generally won over by the instant nature straight away and rarely actually comment on the actual print quality. Looking at the digital files from the camera itself, the 8 megapixel images looked similar to a basic phone with a similar sensor. Not exactly packed with detail or great low light performance, but pleasingly crisp across the frame nonetheless. As a small sensor, do expect noise in low light or shadowy areas. And you also notice the sensor captures taller 4x3 shaped images, which are cropped into a wider 3x2 shape by the printer, although the guidelines in the viewfinder and on the reflective selfie mirror on the front of the camera do take that shape into consideration. One of the key selling points of the Zoe Mini cameras are their ability to be used as instant printers for your phone connected over Bluetooth. Just install Canon's free app for Android or iOS and you can print any photo that's on your phone, including those captured by other cameras and copied onto your handset first. You can also capture new selfies with the app with various fun effects and augmented graphics, or even trigger the shutter in the Zoe Mini itself remotely. Although in the absence of a tripod thread or any kind of feedback on the actual composition, remote group shots may take a few goes to get right. You can't yet print directly from a Canon camera though, I don't expect you to be able to in the future either, unlike the Instax Share printers, which not only print from your phone, but also directly from Fujifilm cameras.
Now, if the idea of printing from your phone or a bigger camera appeals more than using the basic camera in the Zoe Mini S itself, then you may actually be better off just buying a portable instant printer instead. Canon has its own Zoe Mini printer, which is like the Zoe Mini S without the built-in camera, while Kodak has a similar smile printer, and Fujifilm has the Instax Share SP2 and SP3, which print on mini or square prints respectively. The Canon Zoe Mini S is a pocketable instant camera that will capture 8 megapixel images, output them as 2x3 inch instant prints, and also record them to a micro SD card if desired. The Zero Ink or Zinc printing technology may lack the high contrast and vibrancy of Fujifilm's Instax prints, but the actual photo area is a bit bigger, borderless, has a sticky back, and is a little cheaper too at around 50p or cents per print versus around 70p or cents for an Instax Mini. The Zoe Mini S is considerably slimmer than the Instax cameras too, making it genuinely pocketable. The eight LEDs around the lens do a fair job as a flattering ring light for selfies, while the digital sensor within means it gets to exploit auto exposure, auto ISO and auto white balance, making it better equipped to handle broad lighting situations than Fujifilm's fully analog models. Sadly, it doesn't go as far as to include a screen for reviewing images before printing, and it won't take a photo without there being paper loaded. If you prefer to review your pictures before you commit to a print, you can connect your phone over Bluetooth and print any photo stored on it using the free app, although if you actually prefer this flexibility over using the built-in camera, you may be better off just buying yourself a portable instant printer instead, such as Canon's original Zoe Mini or Kodak Smile Printer or one of the Fujifilm Instax Share models. Overall, the Zoe Mini S is a fun camera to use and its size means you'll be taking it out more than many rivals. I've also not met anyone, young or old, who's not spellbound by a low-cost camera that pumps out instant prints, making it perfect for events or breaking the ice in street photography. Although do compare the Zoe Mini closely with Kodak's similar smile cameras, which also use zinc technology but include a basic screen. And of course, Fujifilm's Instax range, which starts with the cheaper Mini 9 cameras and ends with the digital SQ20, which may lack the wireless phone printing, but is a more powerful standalone camera with a built-in screen. Right, that's it for this review. I hope you found it useful. I'd love to hear from you if you own an instant camera, whether it uses Zinc technology, Instax, or something different. More importantly, would you buy it again? And most importantly of all, how do the prints look after a while? Once you've had them out of the machine for a few weeks, months, or even years, do they still look as good or do they fade? Do they handle well? Ultimately, are any of these formats that you would be happy with archiving viable memories or are they just a bit of fun? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you found this review useful, please do give me a like and a follow. And if you really found it useful, you can treat me to a coffee or treat yourself to my in-camera book. And if you'd like to see my own photography, you can follow me on Instagram at Camera Labs. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.